hell was I? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you putting on a tournament, you had to send out flyers, make phone calls, yep. whatever. Now, how many how many thousands of people do you one post on a message board? Right, and bam, you can hit. Yeah, tons how many of thousands of people right. are looking exactly. at that daily? Yep, I uh, so I've been marketing my nationals pretty hard on the internet. I will be sending out a mailing list, but just to people kind of locally in the tri-state area of okay. Salt Lake City. <clears throat> but like today, before or two days ago, before the Arnold started, everyone was in the room. And everyone was talking about their tournament. So they asked me to talk about my tournament. I just said, does anyone in this room not know where the Nationals are this year? No, nope. y'all know? All right, my internet's working. <laughs> the message board's working. Please, there you Thank go. you, there you go. All right. <laughs> he wasn't that good looking either. <laughs> no, we actually didn't need to see yeah. him. So, and then just the, <laughs> the organization in which we run our tournaments is horrible. You've been to the Worlds the last few years. I have. Has one started? Thank you. It's all good. Has it's anyone good. started on time yet? <laughs> yeah. Has any one of them started on time yet, or do they start like three hours late? Um, in Bulgaria, we, did you go to Bulgaria? We I did not go to Bulgaria. Okay, Bulgaria day one was really disorganized and late. Uh, day two, three, and four were good. All right, well, there you day go. Day two, three, and four were good. They Very seemed good. to have yeah. worked out some of the kinks. Yep. Did they start on time? Yep. No. They were better. That's my, I mean, look at this tournament here. <clears throat> okay, now Leonard and Denise are not necessarily known for starting on time. But at this tournament, there's a time crunch because we have a specific time we have to be on the stage. And the Arnold Classic doesn't care if we're not done at 10 o'clock. You're done. We're getting off the stage at okay. 10 o'clock. Yeah. So they can't mess around with this, you know. Uh, so they're forced to be organized with this event. Well, they need to take that, and myself and everyone needs to take that same mentality with every event running. There is no reason why an event can't start on time. My Nationals, I believe it's gonna, I might change the start time. Right now it's set to start at noon. I might change it to start at 12.30, but everyone, I'll change that in, the, in my uh, website well ahead of time. But whatever the scheduled start, start time is, I promise you, I promise that first match is going to happen at that, at that, time? At that second. And we'll, and we'll be done very quickly. Well, now, so and you and I were both at the same tournament in uh, the uh, Northeast at the Black Bear. Right. People landed around here according to a time schedule. Yes. And he was way ahead of schedule. And he was ahead of schedule. And why is it that the rest of us don't follow suit? Yeah, don't do this. I, I totally agree. You know what, Pete Milano, I've told him to his face, on the message board, buddy, you're an idiot. But when it comes to running a tournament, you do a damn fine job at running a tournament. He, re he really well does. Done. Everything yes, was did. as promised, as on promised, time. On time. And what more can you ask for? Absolutely. It was well, not, it was well uh, done. Well done. You're not stuck there. There you go. Oh, look, guys All are starting right. to pay attention. Guys are paying attention. All right. Yeah, it's so, good. <laughs> girls can come through. Guys can't. Neil pick up in the background laughing yeah, at laughing us. Laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, so any so yours event, is going to start on time. Start time. I'm, I'm, I am very well organized. I will have a lot of uh, volunteers, which I think is the key to running a major, a big event. Yes. With lots of, you need a lot of volunteers. Yes. Oh, without a and, doubt. And I've got a lot of volunteers lined up that are going to help out with a lot of the little things that take a lot of just. It's easy to do. Yeah. But they take time. So we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, you couldn't let her come through. That. She's oh, pretty. You yeah. can come through, but smile. You just have to smile for the camera you when you come through. through. That's smile. all. Ladies can come through. <laughs> Men cannot come through. It's okay. It's okay. Right. So, That's what the edit button is for. Yeah, we got edits. <laughs> so anyway, what else is there, sir? The, act, the, the next thing, the very first time I, I personally became aware of you was uh, breakfast in Manchester at the Tulip Inn. So we're sitting down for breakfast. For lack of a better word, this is, okay. you attack Rick Pinkney about draw sheets. Yeah, and, bra they and brackets. Sorry. <laughs> yep. So, so I'm just sitting there going, "What the hell is going on here?" Okay. Okay. This, so let's hear your your stand up. Draw sheets, okay. brackets, whatever draw you want to call. Draw sheets, it. brackets. Okay. Double elimination tournaments. Right. The gentleman, uh, and please forgive me, because I know he's a well respected person in, in Canada and I want to try John Miazdik. Miazdik. Yeah. Okay. John Miazdik and I got this from Rick 
and, and from uh, Lise Blanchard, I believe. Lise Blanchard, yeah. Uh, John Mazdick, many, many years ago, decided that carrying around all these different brackets, a three-man bracket, a four-man bracket, a five-man bracket, a six-man, all the way up to a 32-man bracket, was very cumbersome. And he wanted to devise a system. He wanted to devise a system that allowed for just one piece of paper. Right. So I only got to carry this one piece of paper, and I can do any bracket. So he devised that system, and I, I, I absolutely commend him for doing that. Um, but unfortunately, he, he made a mistake uh, in my mind because he just didn't know how to use a traditional double elimination bracket. You could run, you could have a 32-man bracket and run any number of people in that bracket up to 32. You could run two guys in a 32-man bracket. You could run three, four, five, six, seven, doesn't matter, 12, 15, 18. As long as you don't go over 32, you can run a, a, a 30. Watch out, partner. Say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can run less than 32 guys in that bracket. Um, so he didn't have to carry around all them sheets if he okay. didn't want to. Now, here's the reality. A draw sheet has the ability to make mistakes even without human error. It has the ability to make a mistake. A bracket also has the ability to make a mistake without human error. It's just much less likely with a bracket. Um, and the only reason it can make a mistake is because of a unique law we have. We have a unique rule in our in our sport. Two people cannot pull each other unless you are into the top four. Unless it's for a, a place, first, second, or third. They can't pull each other twice. Can't pull each other right. twice. Okay. That's a unique thing when it comes to double elimination. And that is what in turn creates the potential problem with all bracketing systems. But the thing with a draw sheet, it does not tell you where to put the loser into the B bracket in such a manner to directly keep him away from the guy he just lost to in the turn in the match before. If two guys pull, the loser goes to the bracket. Yes. And then the next two guys pull, the loser goes to the bracket. Well, then you get to the winner's bracket, and when somebody loses, he asked me the question. <laughs> when someone loses, they're going to just get arbitrarily put into the lower bracket, just in their slot. Okay. But when you do that, you have a greater risk for that person being very close to the person he lost to in the upper bracket. Um, and plus, you have your buy problem. All buys should be gotten rid of in the first round. Now, people have opinions on whether that's true or, not, or whether that's... Proper or you know not. what? I have no idea if it's proper or not. I know the way I was taught was on a draw sheet system. Right. And I'm not against anything else. Right. Here's what I don't understand. Okay. Tell me how to tell me how okay. to work this out. So I've gone and I watched uh, I've watched Karen Bean do this on her sheets. Right. Okay, Scott. There's no buys. All the buys are given out in the first round. Right. Okay, I believe you. How? How does this work? How do I know? Okay, I got 16 guys in a class. Right. How many buys am I going to have, Bob? I don't know. I I, well, I can tell you. No, you tell it, me. If you have 16, exactly 16 guys, yep. there's going to be no buys because it's a perfect bracket. Okay. you got eight matches. Now, here's the kicker. Let's say you have uh, 17 guys 17 in your guys, class. Okay. What's interesting is everyone thinks, well, there's going to be one buy. No. No, the further there's, down the road. There's going to be 14 buys. There's going to be one match in the first round. And after that one match, you're down to a perfect 16-man bracket, a 16-person. See, all bracket systems are based on a multiple system. I have a question for you first. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have 17 guys. Right. Well, I'm going to have one match the first round. So one guy has one loss right away from that first. Right. Well, I still got 17 guys in my class, though. One of them has a loss. You one got, has a loss. You'll have 16 guys on the winner's side. Okay. So in essence, four or 15 guys got a buy in the first round. But yeah. then that's it. All the buys are gone. There's no more buys. Okay. All the buys will be gone. Okay. And people will say, well, what's wrong with a buy in the later rounds? Well, let's
let me ask you this. Would you consider a buy to be a benefit? Huge is it, benefit. It's a good thing, right? A huge, if you and I just had a war, yeah. and, and I win it, so I'm getting a buy later on, and you're not. Buy is a benefit, right? Yeah, huge. Double elimination brackets are supposed to be set up so they don't benefit anybody. Okay. Okay. So, if a buy, if a, if a buy in the, so let me ask you this: Where is a buy more beneficial, in the very first round, or in the round that gets you into the finals? Well, of course, it's more beneficial the round that gets you into the finals. Exactly. So, in a draw, just that reason alone, draw sheets allow for the possibility of a buy to get you into the final four. Yes. Where draw or where a bracket gets rid of all buys in the beginning. So just on that method of thinking alone, a bracket is more fair than a draw sheet. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm not. Right. I, I learned yeah. on a draw sheet. Yeah. That's the only thing I know. Hey. I went to my first my first big experience. I went to the AAA Nationals, and I'm actually watching what Karen's doing. Right. Okay. And, and everyone's drawing these numbers, and I'm going, okay, like, I don't understand. Right, right. No, and she's just looking at me. Scott, how long have you been around? 20-something years, but th that's not relevant. That's not what I've learned to do. Right. That's all. Exactly. Explain this to me. Exactly right. That's exactly all. Right. You know, it's, it's just a new way of, you know, if you've learned something, one thing your entire life one way, it's very possible that you've learned something your entire life one way, and it happens to be the wrong way. Whatever. You know, it's or, on anything. I mean, yeah. I know guys that have been top rolling for 10 years, they still don't know what the heck they're doing because they learn the long, wrong way. But it's working. You know? But it, it works for them. Yeah. What's you know? the time situation on there? Mark Brooks is uh, right here. 36 minutes. How many? 36 minutes. Okay. We're going to Florida. You're going to meet outside the 4 o'clock at 11 And then what are you going to do at 11.30? Oh, at 11.30. What time is it now? 10.45. You're going to go, be across the street at Burley's. Yeah. Okay. They're talking about food. Okay, good. They gotta feed the belly. Feed the belly. <laughs> talking about food. <laughs> Bracket. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'll tell you another thing. It was glaring. And I believe it was a new bracketer or a drill sheet person in Manchester. Classic example of a, of a problem. Ron Bath, we're down to the final six. Yeah. Ron Bath is in the loser's bracket. Okay. They called him up on stage to pull a guy he already has pulled. I was the captain of the team. I went flying to the booth, the, the desk sheet, uh, draw sheet area. I said, hey, he's already pulled this guy. All right, we'll switch him up. As it turned out, he had already pulled all the other guys in the loser's bracket. He had pulled them all. Why? Well, had they pulled each other? Those other two guys? No. But but there was four guys in there. Ron had to pull one of them now. Yeah. In a, on a bracket system. That can't happen? That can't happen. They want to have. Now, and only because that, the, the problem is you really do, it's a specific place. When someone loses, you need to put them in such a way at the bottom to ensure that they don't go against the same person. That's all a bracket does, really. Yeah, yeah. Is it is a already pre-thought out process of where to place the loser to keep them away from the guy they just arm wrestled okay. in the loser's bracket. That's all it does. So Okay, so you know what? I don't know if it clears it up now, because for me, right. I'd have to actually watch it. Yeah, we need a bracket here to show. But yeah. Yeah. And, and so for me, so I watched what uh, Leonard and Denise are doing and how they're running the tournament. I'm right. watching what, what the Beans are doing and running the tournament. I'm watching Pete. Right. Um, and everybody's doing things a little bit different, right. but a lot the same. And there's people that have used what I'll call a AAA bracket or a USAA bracket. They've used them for 30 years, and they still don't know how to use them. <laughs> and the reason is, is because, like, for example, there's a six-man bracket, a seven-man bracket, an eight-man bracket, a nine-man bracket, a ten Perfect brackets are on a multiple. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. 64. Yep. If I was running a tournament, the only brackets I would bring with me is an eight, a 16, and a 32. 
And then at the Worlds, of course, you're probably going to need that 64. You may, but yeah. But that's all you need. I could run anything from 17 to 32 on a 32-man bracket. On a 32, bracket. okay. You just have to know how to use that bracket, and that's that's the key. And it's, I mean, it's, it's easy, but there's a lot of people out there that if there's seven guys, they have to have a seven-man bracket because they don't know how to do it on a six-man bracket. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's lots okay. of people like that. So okay. anyway, that's enough about brackets. That's right. So we covered brackets, and we covered, uh, we've covered your view on the rules, a little bit about your career. So now, at this stage in your life, what's next for Bob Brown in arm wrestling? Well, uh, in short, I just found out that I probably have a tumor, possible tumor in my brain near my pituitary gland. Uh, I have an MRI on Monday to find that out. If that is true, then I don't know if it's like, do you remove it, not remove it, is it growing, what kind is it, I don't know. I've been told that even if it is there, it's not a big deal to remove it. That's what I've been told. Uh, and so that's next course. And then of course, uh, you know, my arm is terrible. I, my elbow popped again uh, when pulling Ron Klemba. My left arm has not healed since the net worlds in Manchester. Okay. And I have no explanation why I don't seem to heal anymore. Well, I found out I had high cholesterol. That's what sent me to the doctors for blood tests and things like that. That's when we discovered a problem, potential problem in my brain. And the doc I said, could that be what's causing me not to heal? And she said, oh, absolutely. Okay. Something with your uh, luteinizing hormone tells your testicles to produce testosterone. Mine doesn't do that. Okay. A man needs testosterone to heal himself. Right. I don't. Ha I literally. I am like way off the charts low in testosterone count. So when they were looking as to why, that's when they discovered this tumor in my near my in my brain. And so hopefully that may help me to heal. But I mean, my arm's hammered. Just you know? from from years of abuse and arm years wrestling. Years of abuse. You know, so if, if, if I have surgery, whether it's on my brain or my arm, and I start to feel healthy, I know I'll pull again. I'm too stupid not to pull again. That's what arm wrestlers do. That's what we do. <laughs> right. You know, so. But that's it. I mean, I, you know, in the last three and a half years, it's been a roller coaster. Lost my leg. I got married. Uh, that, you know, we're, me and my wife, Tracy, we're trying to have a baby, and... That's another, because of this whole thing, I can't have a child right now. Yeah. I'm trying to fix that. So, but life's good. So, uh, you know what, the way, uh, I, lo I love your attitude. Yeah. I, I do, I love your attitude. So I, I have once heard you say it, and I've also read, uh, read where you put it in, in uh, print type on the internet, that, so you call Vern Martell your hero. He's my hero. You know what, Paul? I, I think you're pretty heroic yourself. I've, I've never, I I've, ne I've never heard you bitch and complain about whatever life has dealt you. Yeah. You know what? This is what it is. Let's go. Right. Type right. Of thing. So, I think, I think that's great. I think it's incredible. Well, and you know, I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> you know, I probably spent the first couple of years after my accident on a couch watching TV. Yeah. But uh, no, but life's doing all right. Life's good. Yeah. I don't. I don't consider my leg an issue when it comes to arm wrestling. I really don't. I had a problem. It's interesting. When people back pressure, they don't even think about their feet, but your foot's flat on the floor with your toes pointed, you yeah. know? Yeah. But that's how my foot is. So when I go to push on that, either my foot slides forwards or sometimes my knee will go down. My foot will drop. My knee goes forward. I fall under the table. And that was the problem. <laughs> so I talked to my prosthetic guy so now oh, i have excuse a me, excuse me excuse me thank so, you very much so now i have a foot that i can point the toe on permanently okay so, so you I, actually move your foot i move my foot i point it i arm wrestle i grab my foot i can pull it back up okay i don't notice it at all now when i arm wrestle okay. my leg is not is a non-issue when it comes to arm wrestling so interesting yeah so you know what to wrap things up yeah. um a little thing i did with uh, neil pickup i'm just going to throw some names at you you tell me the first thing that comes to your head 
Okay. John Brzezink. God of arm wrestling. Ron Bath. An amazingly strong arm wrestler. Amazingly strong human being who needs to learn how to arm wrestle. <laughs> He's gonna beat me to death with that. Okay, Ron. I didn't say that. That was that was Bob. I love you, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew Rhodes. The greatest hand strength I've ever grabbed. His hand is powerful. Great technician. Uh, Travis Bajan. Cockiest SOB on the planet, but we need him to a point. I wish he would, you know, in Manchester he went overboard. He knows he went overboard. But all the shenanigans that he puts on it, like tournaments, I think it's good for our sport. It helps grow our sport. All right. That's Thank good. you. Good, thanks. <laughs> No, 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 I was talking to the... No, 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 it's good. It's good, it's good. No. So, who else? Uh, Bob Brown. Bob Brown used to be one bad son of a gun, <laughs> I'll tell you. You know, the older I get, the better I was, you know, and uh, I would like for... I would like one more time in my life to have a totally healthy arm and be totally healthy and pull again. I really believe I could wreak havoc in the 154s or 165s if I had my arm totally back, and I haven't had my arm in many years. So, do you think it's possible? With whatever ailments you're having right now, is it possible to, to get that back again? My heart says yeah, my brain says no. Okay. So, so is the, the body's just starting to break down from... Yeah. Years of abuse and, yep. and whatever else. And, and life and yeah. Yep. So you know, but I I'm sure I'll still pull. Broken no down doubt. or not, I'm yeah. gonna pull. Uh, and I just wanna be healthy. Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm healthy. So that's, that's, that's not a I bad want. thing to shoot yep. for. Yep. Now I will say note about this, because we're talking about age. The Arnold Classic, there's six weight classes, four for men, two for women. Excuse me, thank, and, you. Uh, thank you. Of the six weight classes, five of them were won by a master. Only Mike Solaris is the only ma non, -master non master who won. RJ Molinari is a master. RJ, yeah. Crazy George is a grandmaster. Grandmaster. Uh, Richard Lucas. Richard Lucas is a grandmaster. He's 50. Is he 50? Uh, Joyce King is a master. Joyce King is a master. And Margie Chachi. Is a, and she's a master as master. well? Yep. Wow. Uh, boy, that's saying something. That's I think that's impressive. That really is that's saying impressive. something. With all the impressive young guns yep. that are out there, yep. that really is impressive. Yep. And I picked uh, Rich Lucas to win. Did you? That well, you know, and so but in I all fairness, to... you called me on the phone yeah. and you told me that you did not think John would win. Right. When everyone else... Everyone, if John's showing up, they think he's a lock. Right. They well, really do. I kind of had the inside scoop because I trained with him. I knew his wrist was hurting pretty bad. And I know that he needs his wrist for Tim Bresnan, and he needs his wrist for Richard Lucas. Okay. And the, and the last and final name I'm going to throw out, throw it at you, only because of what you said, uh, so Vern Martell. That's amazing. I mean, he truly is. He truly is amazing. Yeah, no, I, I now have a sense for what he's been through. Yeah. That excuse guy me, me, thank you. is thank absolutely you. an amazing human being. I told him, <clears throat> I said, you ever come back into this sport, and I'm going to get down to the 54s for you, Vern, because I want to bull you. He's coming back, and I, I don't know. if I need my arm to get back. To have the men, I don't have the mental ability to get into the 54s. No. But if my arm's feeling good, oh, I'll shred it right down. <laughs> so as a matter of fact, I think he's coming back in uh, Tahoe, is he I, not? I can't wait to give him a big hug. I oh, love yeah. the guy. Uh, Vern, Vern is an incredible, incredible arm wrestler, yep. an incredible, incredible ambassador to arm yep. wrestling, yep. and just an incredible person. Oh, absolutely. So uh, uh, for me personally, my, one of my best memories is after he won the uh, John Miastic Award. Uh, in Canada, yeah. uh, him and I sat together on, we went on a houseboat cruise, and I got to talk to him, and uh, just finding out about his life, same thing as I'm doing with you, right, yeah. except it was not on camera. Right, oh, we're, wow. We were just having a, having a chat, yeah. and you know what, as you just did it a minute ago, I had tears yep. welling up in my eyes, 
thinking, man, I'm so proud to sit next to this guy and yep. just, you know, have him talk to me. It was, it was First great. First time I, uh, I believe it was in, uh, I want to say Boomtown. I'm not 100% sure, but me and my wife sat down and we ended up having dinner with him. Okay. We talked for a couple hours or so. Changed my life. Really? Changed my life. Wow. Wow. Well, you know what, Bob? That's all I have. I really appreciate you stopping yeah, yeah. by. That no, was great. It was. Uh, I'm glad I asked you to do this and stop by. We get a chance to sit and talk and uh, get your views on things. So you better, you better edit it down a little because I talk a lot. That's okay. I've had interviews where I've had to cut it down to three parts because we oh, talk so much. <laughs> but that's great. Thanks very much, Bob. Thank you. All right, for uh, Arnold Sport Videos and In Focus here at the Arnold Classic, uh, I'm Scott McGinnis for uh, Bob Brown, and we're out of here. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.